I am making some homemade pizza. And the thing is about this one, we're gonna cook it on the grill over charcoal in my cast iron skillet. This is the first time doing this, so we'll see. It's an experiment, but I think it's gonna be really good. But the crust I am making with my homemade bread recipe that I make my bread that tastes so much like my mom's did years ago. And the trick is with her bread recipe, why I couldn't find what tasted like hers for years and years, even though I searched, she used lard. And most of the recipes you find these days have like oil or whatever, but she used lard. And I think that's the old fashioned way they had lard back in those days. So anyway, finally found a recipe that tastes like my mom's. And I am going to make my pizza crust with it. This was in here. I've got warm water, um, kind of lukewarm. Oh, I guess usually around 110 degrees, 115 degrees, because you put yeast in it and you don't want to kill the yeast with hot water, but it has to be warm enough to activate it. And it also has the sugar in it. I, I don't know what the sugar does. I read sometime or other, but sugar does something to help the yeast. I don't know. So I just do. I don't have to know why always. <laughs> anyway. We are going to, you have to stir this until the yeast dissolves. And I think it's probably pretty good there. I believe it's dissolved. I have the melted lard. And I'm gonna add that to it. I'm gonna mix that up a bit. Bread is actually pretty easy. It's surprising. If you've never made it, don't be afraid to try it. It's surprisingly easy. Then we're going to take, I cheat. I use my mixer. Whoop, oh, gotta turn it on, huh? Gotta plug it in. I use my mixer. My mom didn't have the convenience of the mixer. I do, I use it. used to mix all of this by hand. You put a couple cups of the flour in there. And let that mix up first. Kind of get that incorporated in there. I'm a person that doesn't have immense patience. <laughs> I want it done now and done fast. So I kind of crank it up. Come hurt it a bit. And the recipe actually says to mix in like a half a cup of the flour at a time. I go more than that. And it does just fine. There again, that's some of that lack of patience thing. Get it mixed in there. So if you want to make some homemade bread, this is how you do it. Or how I do it. 
if you want to make cinnamon rolls or caramel rolls, I make it with this same dough. I just add the things to make the rolls. You can make dinner rolls with the same dough. I have made oh, garlic sticks with the same dough and it's really good. I use it for everything. I do not have a KitchenAid mixer. I have the lower cost Sunbeam mixer, but I'll tell you what, it does a pretty darn good job for the price of it. I paid a whole lot less for this than you do a KitchenAid. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a KitchenAid, but sometimes you go for the more cost effective, the cheaper. But I've had this mixer a long time and it's worked. It's done really good for me. Although it likes to hop around a little sometimes. And it's got the, I've got the um, dough beaters on there. Let's see, look at the dough beaters. It comes with dough beaters. It works great for the dough. Well, it does a good job for me. So I want to get that mixed up good in there. I do want to make sure that that dry, the dry ingredients in there are mixed together with it. Let's turn it down a little. I want to make sure that they get mixed in there well because they do kind of hang out on the bottom there. KitchenAid probably doesn't do that. My sunbeam does, but it doesn't take much to get it next to It beats doing it all by hand. Oh my gosh, I've done that too, but this is a whole lot easier. Away. Let's get it mixed in there good. It's all the dry stuff on the bottom that is mixed in there now. Now the recipe says to knead it by hand for eight minutes now at this point. I keep letting my mixer do it. Some people like to knead. Yeah, I let the mixer do it. I personally like quick and easy. So we're going to mix this until it gets kind of elastic. It doesn't take as long in the mixer as it does by hand. So I don't go the full eight minutes, but I, I go probably about five minutes. kind of keep working it in there so that it, it works up all of the dough, not just in one spot. I just kind of, you know, turn it like that, lift it up and let it do its thing. Okay, the dough is ready. I beat it with the beaters long enough. And I have a big bowl over here that I have greased with lard. And I'm gonna put it in there. You know, when I get it out, to let it raise. It's first raising. So see, you're getting kind of a double informative thing. Pizza and how to make homemade bread. Okay, let's kind of get it in a nice little ball. Put it in there so that 
it gets the grease on, you know, the lard on that side. And then I'm gonna flip it over. You know, some people make those things so smooth and pretty. Yeah, it all comes out the same. You don't have to worry about it too much. So anyway, we're gonna leave it in the pan. I am going to take a dish towel and wet it. And just wring it out so it's damp. And we'll put the dish towel over the bowl. That way the dough won't dry out as it's sitting. Well, I got kind of a small dish towel to go over it, didn't I? Oh, I think it'll be okay. Don't close the door. We'll just kind of bring it up against there. But that wet will keep it from drying out. And we're gonna let that sit for an hour to raise. It'll be about double in size. I think it's ready. It's about double in size. So I'm gonna punch it down. And I'm just kinda roll it up. Cause I want to get, let me see, it's alive. About half of the dough. Probably not quite. I usually cut it, do like that, roll it up and then hold it so I know where it's half. I want a little under half, I think, for the, the pizza. That we're gonna toss over there. And this one, we are going to make a loaf of bread because this recipe actually makes two loaves of bread. So we're gonna use one for pizza, and the other one we'll go ahead and make a loaf. We're gonna do it upside down like that to there again get the lard on there so it doesn't dry out. I'm gonna flip it over so it's a nice loaf in there. Got to get the Excuse me. <laughs> a fork. Because my mama, I don't know that everybody does this, but my mama used to poke it with a fork so it doesn't get air bubbles in the loaf. So I do that too. I do lots of things I remember my mama doing when I was a kid. I had no interest in baking or cooking at that time. So I didn't learn like I should have. But, <laughs> but I learned now. We're gonna set this back over here and let it rise double again. That'll take about uh, 30 minutes, I think. Maybe 40, 30 to 40 minutes. And this one, we are going to go ahead and flatten it out for the pizza. fat over on that side, so maybe I can kind of work it over a little. I wish I knew how to do that twirling thing that some people are so good at. Nah, get it wind up on the floor. You can bet on that. So I don't even try. I should. I should sometime. Why not? Okay, I'm gonna bring it up the sides just a little bit to give it kind of an edge, a crusty edge. Yeah, I got plenty of dough there for that. It's gonna be a nice deep dish pizza. And again, I take the fork and poke holes so that it doesn't rise up, you know, get bubbles in there. I don't want bubbles. 
Okay, that'll do it. All right. I didn't make my own sauce. I cheated. I'm actually using spaghetti sauce. But it's enough. It'll give it good flavor. There is no right or wrong about pizza anyway, I don't think. Okay. That's going to about do it. And because I need to doctor everything up, Italian seasoning, put some of that in the sauce, gives it a little bit extra zip. I put a, put a pretty good amount actually, because we love garlic. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in the, in the sauce. minced garlic and mm, don't tell Sherry I'm putting a little bit of onion in there but I don't think she'll mind this <laughs> Sherry's my camera gal <laughs> so don't tell Sherry okay now I'm gonna put onions on about half of this because not everybody in the house likes onions. But some of us love onions. Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of bell pepper on one side, on half of it. Because there again, not everybody likes bell pepper. Some of us love it. I love green olives. I don't know if any, do you like olives on your pizza? I don't care. Okay. I like green olives. I got green olives. He loves green olives. But I think we're going to put that on part of the pizza, too. You like green olives on pizza? Well, we'll leave some of it then. Half of it. <laughs> These fussy people around here. Me, I'd have it loaded with everything. And fresh garlic is really good on it. So we're going to put some chopped up fresh garlic. And we're going to put lots of pepperoni on it. have lots, so we're going to put lots on. You know what I usually do and I forgot to do? I put cheese over top of the sauce, usually. I just put the sauce on there and then uh, just a bit of cheese. It makes it really good and I forgot to do that this time. Oh well, it'll still be good. That cheese melts in with the with the sauce then and it's good. Well, next time.
We're loading this with pepperoni because we all love pepperoni. This is the slow part though. You can't just scatter it. Oh, that's okay. I double those good. I get that piece. <laughs> I sure hope this turns out good over the coals in the barbecue grill. I know it'll taste really good. See if it just turns out. And I don't know why not, so. Okay. We're gonna put a little bit, if we have on hand Colby and Monterey Jack cheese, so we're gonna put a little bit of that on. I usually have some cheddar cheese. I don't have that today, so. But I like the flavors of the different cheeses. And the mozzarella. Love mozzarella cheese. I like lots of mozzarella cheese. Can you tell? <laughs> Ooh, yummy. first and we'll take that out to the barbecue grill and see how it works. <laughs> All right, the bread is risen. Oh, <laughs> that's a little funky today. We're going to put that in the oven. It's not come out as pretty as normal, but that's okay. It'll taste as good. You put it in the oven, you heat it up to 4, 425 and then to bake it, Go down uh, to 375. Whoops. <laughs> and we'll bake it for 30 minutes. All right. That's it. Wait for the pizza now. All right. We are ready to put the pizza on there. I love my 17-inch cast iron skillet. We're gonna put it in, with what we did, and we've not done this before, so we don't know what to do, but I'm thinking direct heat would not be good. So we put the coals up against its edges, the sides. And I have a probe thermometer that I don't know if it'll work or not, but, I'm going to put this in here and see if I can kind of monitor the temperature in there. If it'll kind of sit there. And let's put the uh, beans. It's kind of hot. <laughs> put this down. And let her cook. Mmm, I smell bread. Yummy. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. Gosh, I love, whoops, excuse me, I love homemade bread. I'm going to put some 
butter on it. It keeps that crusty part, whoops, nice and soft. Yum. Ooh, yeah. You know, I forgot to get a rack out for it. By the way, I love my cast iron. I use cast iron for almost all of my baking and cooking anymore. There it is. We will let it cool and have some fresh homemade bread after a while. Actually, we won't. We'll have this tomorrow because we're eating pizza tonight. <laughs> All right, well, let's check it. It's been about 20 minutes, so let's check and see where we're at with it, what it's doing, what it's looking like. Oh, look at that, though. It is cooking. Well, that's cool. Let's see what the underside looks like. Ooh, it's coming along. Oh, yeah, I think it's coming along nicely. I'm going to go ahead and turn it a quarter turn. We'll put it down, cover it up, and cook it a little longer. Okay, what's it hitting on? Oh, I can't turn it a quarter turn. I'll turn it a three quarters turn. Because the pan's too big for it. The handles were getting in the way. I couldn't shut it. <laughs> All righty. We'll cook it a while longer. Smelling it. It's smelling good. Whoops, there goes my probe. Mmm, I think it's still... Well, look at that, though. The crust is looking good. Actually, it looks really good. Look at that. Ooh, I kind of think that might be, might be done. What do you think? I think so. I think we're gonna take it off. All righty. Well, that looks good. I can smell the bread. Ooh, smells good. So let's let's cut it and see. Except I need a cutter that'll get in the edges, or I need a knife too. Ooh, I think that looks pretty darn good. Look at that crust. I think that looks perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think we're ready to eat. I wound up cooking this one. I would have liked it a little bit hotter, so I'm gonna put more coals on it next time. But the crust is great. Having the indirect heat, having the coals to the sides worked really good, I think. I think we just need to get it a little bit hotter next time. But I wound up cooking this one, I'm gonna say 30, 35 minutes, 20, yeah, 30 to 35 minutes, which is fine. And look at that, it looks really good. The bread crust looks really good. I think it's gonna be great. We will let you know how it tastes. <laughs> Okay, the real test. I gotta have a beer with this one. <laughs> but here's the real test. See how it tastes. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It tastes good. Really good. Wow. Do I need to like it? I think we did good on this. 
I think the next time I'll do even better because I'll have the temperature up a little higher, have it more controlled. But I am very happy with this. Y'all need to do this. You'll like it. I'd say it was good. That's what's left of it.